Hello YouTube, I'm back with the next Battle Boss toy review, and today I'm reviewing the Pro Series Dissector toy. You probably would have seen this coming, actually, but... Oh, maybe not, but uh, as you can see, it's a very... If you remember Dissector from the show, very successful. A couple championships under its belt, and it got popular enough to get one of these toys. And actually, this was... They first showed this as a prototype in the Battle Bots Season 3.0, Episode 10. It was grappling with a complete control... Pro Series toy, which unfortunately I think became Biohazard, given that the the toy of that the complete control prototype was actually had six wheels. So, and since the Biohazard toy has six wheels, I think it's a good bet that they were planning on complete control, but then complete control didn't succeed or do well or wasn't panning out in terms of you know how to make it, and then they went with Biohazard. It'd been fun though. Actually, it would have been great, especially since Dissector is convertible. That's pretty cool. Now, regarding the toy itself, I can't show you a whole lot in terms of its functionality, but as you can see, there's a lot of detail here. Here's the top. Got the three LED lights. You'd have to knock, get these all the way off, all three of them to off, in order to actually succeed. It's got one of the hammers. It actually has two hammers. And as I'll mention later, you will be able to do its victory dance, but it's a bit different. There's also separate jaws that came with this. I don't have them. I can't, or I can't find them, but they were red it reddish and they were much narrower i like these jaws better because not only do they match the show but you can actually have them better as a wedge see i can get a little functionality out of them not much but you can tell i make this you can actually hear they're connected they're not i wish more like the biohazard where i could actually adjust them but then i wouldn't be able to do much about it with them in the actual fight and for the bottom it's all black there's the battery there's the battery right there doesn't look convertible. It's probably also because of, uh, you know, uh, just as you can tell them apart, you need to, to actually verify which way is up. But yeah, I mean, they went a lot of detail, a lot, lot better than the, uh, you know, the custom series where they actually kind of made, they kind of went with their own logo, if you will. But here they actually went with the actual logo for Dissector, which is pretty cool. Or very nearly. I mean, it may not be perfect, but. They even got the Mutant Robots logo up top here, the one at the time. I mean, obviously, I think theirs has changed a little bit now. But there's a lot of detail. I had actually lots of fun with this one. I never actually, uh, going into, like, you know, like, where it, uh, the functionality of it. Yes, the jaws go low enough. The jaws would go low enough that he could raise the two wheels off the ground and at least attempt to get the victory dance going. Although, unfortunately, it's a lot slower. And these hammers, you have no control over whatsoever, so they will randomly drop to the floor. And there's a little functionality, you can just kind of wave at you. It's just kind of waving. Or I guess if you really want to put it into perspective, it's kind of like when Dissector was stuck up against the spike strip, or just knocked out against the spike strip, and it's matched with Grenda, which just had that one hammer going back and forth. Yeah, these actually you can somewhat position, but you have no control over them. They will just randomly drop to the floor, and you or move around, or whatever. So that's kind of a disappointment, because that means Dissector's Victory Dance is rather slow and uh, kind of pitiful, actually. It'll spin around probably twice before the hammer will go. It'll just drop like this, and then it'll raise back up, and then it'll spin around again, drop to the floor. I mean, they went through a lot of details. You can, see, you can lift this up a little bit. That's kind of cool. And the jaws will actually come off over time. The only real problem with this is that if you were to actually go to change them, it's a pain in the neck. So I would not be one to recommend changing them. Because although two of them, I mean, if you look carefully on the side here, see if I can get a good view. Yeah, right in here, there are two little screws here, but they're not facing all the same way. I personally, I mean, the upper jaw doesn't matter, but the two on the bottom, they matter. And they actually are facing inside each other. I don't know if you can see it that well. Let's see if I can get a good shot of it. But there's... You see the little gray thing with the little screw, the little slot? That's the screw that actually holds this thing together. Let's see if I can... Oops, I'm losing myself here. Yeah. Right where this finger is, there's a screw there. And there's a screw there. Yeah. So the only way you're going to be able to get into this is you got to take the one on the outside first. You're going to have to take this one out first to get to this one. This is why I would have said, okay, if you're going to do this, if you're going to build a toy like this, you need to have them 
facing outward. So if this one faces this way, and the other one must face this way. So you can easily access them. That may have been just an oversight with them. But at least they tried to get the, the uh, chisels right. I mean, actually, yeah. These are actually not connected either. I mean, this is, uh, this, you can slide in and out. You can even take them out if you want. But they slide. They actually move. You can actually, they're actually not, I don't know if I actually had to assemble them when I got there. I know, I, I know this, I know if you're like, you really don't like the jaws. Let's see if I can, they come right out. And that's another thing with the toy is that these don't really stay in very well. They will actually pop out over time. Like if you drag them on the floor, and you eventually, like, these will pop out over time, so. I know I've had it happen at least once where it, like, kind of just jostled, got jostled out of place. Let's see if I can, kind of like that. You see, that's, that's how easy it is, and then, it, and then, of course, you can, uh, let's see if I can get the jaw, there we go, that back in place. You can slide it back in. I presume you can probably uh, slide it back in the way it came out. You know, but it's probably a whole lot easier just to slide it right in the, the gap they give you. But yeah, if you manage to get your hands on this and you can get a working battery, it's definitely a lot of fun. At least I tried to get Dissector's uh, Victory Dance, you know, more or less to an extent. It actually has a lot more functionality in the Biohazard toy because the weapons are actually the jaws you can adjust. As I said, they go up. They they go down at least a little bit. I don't know how far they... But they don't stay in that way for long. You can actually make them as a wedge as well. I get a little bit with the, uh, the toy. Yeah, you get something like that. So Okay, there's a little functionality I can, I can show you here. They pop up like that. I don't know if I can... Yep, there's the jaws like that. See, I don't know if I can get the bottom jaws to move, though. There they go. Something like that. Just this won't hurt. This won't hurt it because the uh, battery's dead anyway. So good luck finding another battery anyway. These are probably. I mean, uh, Radio Shack's pretty well gone now. The one nearest me is gone. So it's just really, it goes to show you the time, the uh, changing of times after this was released back in oh, 2002, I think. So yeah, this is definitely worthwhile. It's kind of a shame that the tires. The only thing they did is they had a little root, little. Uh, I don't know if you can see it that well, but there's a little uh, rubber rim around the outside here for traction. It's kind of a shame they didn't do the whole thing with the tire, but I guess otherwise it wouldn't uh, want to do something nice and simple to actually get the, the, uh, the toy to drive around. Biohazard, no problem. It's just a flat rim. That's, what I would, that's probably what I would have done here. So, and of course, if you notice, if you're wondering what the little green button here is on top, that's the reset button. It actually has to be the reset button. There's nothing else on here that would actually indicate what it is. So yeah, Tiger Electronics, which made who made both the Biohazard toy, the this toy, and all the custom series toys, they did pretty well on this. They also made the Mechadon handheld game, which I already reviewed. So they did pretty well. It's enough for like probably most fans pick up going, oh yeah, that's Dissector. But with the new BattleBots toys coming out, I kind of wish they were. The, uh, these toys are more like those because they actually not only have a lot more accuracy, they're probably going to be a lot more fun because they don't take away from the actual design of the robot. And if I get my hands on those, I'll review those as well. I'm thinking those are going to be a lot of fun to show. And they're small enough that I probably can use um, one of the things I used to actually hold up one of the other toys I reviewed. Or I think it was the, uh, the gauntlet I think I used it on. Which, no, it couldn't have been the gauntlet. Yeah. Well, part of the uh, Robot Wars gauntlet, I could probably use to help, help set those up, and then you can really see how they work. But they're already out on uh, the Hexbug website, though. So if you're really itching to go buy them, you might be lucky and get them at Toys R Us. I've read a couple people finding them a little early. They're supposed to be due out late September. Kind of so much for that, but you'll probably they'll probably be very scarce at the moment until they actually get released. But yeah, definitely on Hexbug, they, they're available now, I checked. It's kind of a surprise, considering the fact that they said they would be on the website on Monday, which is today, but they were out Sunday at least, maybe maybe uh, late Saturday, but it was definitely Sunday. I think it must have been Sunday night they were up. But yeah, I would say, oh, and one thing I forgot to mention is at the back here, there's a little wedge here. 
I forgot to grab that, but it's not that exciting anyway. It's just a little extension. It's a very short-looking wedge. It will not do very well in matches anyway. It'll snap off, you know, during the match. It's not, you know, motorized or anything. So once Dissector gets flipped up on its back end and comes back down again, it's going to stay there until it gets flipped. But yeah, I would say this is definitely a worthwhile toy, especially since you've got yellow jaws, not like made of black or anything. I mean, this is very well done, I would say. Could be better. The victory dance would be nice, because remember in the show, Dissector spun around like four or five times within probably a couple of seconds, but... They did get most of the details right, I would say. They even got the fake battle scars like the uh, Pro Series uh, Biohazard. That's where all the little silver marks are. This is not necessarily from damage, necessarily. But it's very well done. If you get your hands on this and get it functioning, you know, props to you if you get that far. It's definitely worthwhile. I definitely had a lot of fun when I had these when I was a kid. I was about 12 when these came out. So that's my review on the BattleBots Dissector Pro Series toy. Thanks for watching.